says it this way, a word fitly spoken. I like that. It doesn't say a word spoken. It says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. That when I speak the right words to her, I frame her future. Mm, that's good. Well, I'm going to just speak for myself, but for me, um, you know, it was a man, you know, that hurt me. So it's like, how could another man bring healing when it was a man that brought hurt? I had to get to a place where I totally trusted God. And I'm like, okay, God, if this is the person for me, then okay, I'm all in. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're here. Dan and I are here today with Pastor Justin Annette. How are y'all today? I'm oh, doing great. So glad to be with you guys. Yay! Yeah, we're glad to have you. And the reason that we have Pastor Justin Annette is because we're launching a February, the, the month of love. Happy series. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Woo. Day. It <laughs> is. Hey, guys. Hey, guys, you need to make plans. Yeah, <laughs> now. totally. But don't forget church on Wednesday night, okay? That's yeah. coming from the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we won't forget about that next week. Um, but we wanted to have another series that talked about relationships. So we're calling this Let's Talk About It because we had a great opportunity last year. And if you didn't get a chance to catch the couples episode with Pastor Justin and Annette, we'll link it in the show notes at the end. But we wanted to dig a little bit deeper into relationships and communication and all those, the the weeds, so to speak, That's of being married. I call them practicals. Practicals? You know, it's like the okay. thing, like it's really cool to live – like the spiritual, what we get fed on the weekends, and that's okay. amazing, and through the week on Wednesdays. But like when it comes to like the Monday through Saturday nitty gritty of relationships, like it's really great to have a, a pastoral perspective on some oh, of sure. these things, which is I think why this is such going to be an awesome conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and we're having these. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. I w- I'm excited want, for these questions. So I want you to get okay. I want you. I'm excited. And, and these questions are a variety of questions as we've had conversations with people yes. that wanted to know your hearts about stuff. Um, so the first one really is just about communication and, you know, the word always says we want to speak the truth in love and sometimes in marriage, sometimes it's hard to do both at the same time to speak truth to your partner, but also yes. do it with love mm-hmm. and you can, you can mess up on either side. So, um, how do you do it even when it's hard? How do you speak truth and love consistently? You pastor <laughs> <laughs> well, several years ago. I was, I, I love studying God's love because he is love. Mm-hmm. And um, the Lord showed me speaking the truth in love is not just speaking it in love, but it's speaking it because of love. If n- not saying things just for the sake of saying them because you saw it, because that would be a critical spirit. But That's good. knowing when you, you've heard something and you know you're supposed to say it, right. that's mm-hmm. speaking it because of love, because God's told you to say something. And it's, and, and it's going to come from there. It's going to come from that heart yeah. of love, heart of God. Um, and, and yes, it, it can be difficult, and it all depends on the other person and how they receive it. Um, but again, they'll know your heart. A husband and a wife need to know each other's heart, that you're not being critical. You're, you know, the word says that when you speak in love, it says that you mature, you grow. You don't want to stay the same. We want our marriage to grow. You know, mm-hmm. we can stay the same and nobody say anything and you can, your marriage can last 70 years, 60 years, but it's because no one has said anything. Right. <laughs> you know, right. no one is, you're not right. growing. Right. Yeah. I think the, uh, we talk about communication. You have to understand there's always a there's always a transmitter and there's a receiver. You know, you have a you have a one that's talking and you have one that's listening. And oftentimes we we talk about the one that is communicating and don't really focus on the one that's hearing. That's good. And I think a lot of times we we have to become better at is am I not just talk am I am I not just talking in love but am I hearing in love? That's good. I think that um, and it goes back to just what Pastor Annette said. I know her heart. I know her heart for me is for me to be better. Right. My heart for her is for is to is to protect her. My heart for her is to see her prosperous, to see her strong, to see her uh, fulfill her destiny and fulfill the calling on her life. So my thing is, if she's coming to me with something out of love, and it's something in the, that I may not want to hear. Um, you know, I have to understand this is, 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 it's because 
it's like because she loves me and at the same time I'm hearing it that way. Okay, even though I may get defensive, even though it may bring up walls at first, and you have that moment to to after the conversation to to for the to, and take it to the Lord and say say well I know she, I I know her intention isn't this or it isn't because that's the enemy is bringing bring will bring the negative emotions into it. Thing is, is I, I have to know her heart, and that's I think if we can settle that, yeah. um, that's going to change communication because I know it's coming from a position of love, not a position of why aren't you doing what I'm saying? Um, And not being afraid to speak. And she doesn't say that. Why aren't you doing this? That's not how she And not being afraid to speak because a lot of times, you know, I'll have to say, you need to, if you see something, I need you to say something. Right, right. And And having that openness with one another. We need each other. Mm -hmm. So if you see something in me, I need you to tell me. So. And and so for me, um, you know, communication has always been hard um, to be able to communicate when it pertains to conflict, you know, resolution. And because you know, I always come to the standpoint of I've got big shoulders, so I can handle this and, and I'd rather just, okay, I'll just take care of myself. Um, I mean, really, <laughs> Annette's amazing. So if there's not, there's not anything that I see, she goes, if there's anything I see, I'm like, what do you mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but uh, I mean, I, and I get her heart and, and there's conversation with him. There's things I, that, you know, I've shared or had, had to yeah, grow in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the point is with communication, understanding there's a giver and a receiver and both of them have to receive it in love. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so, so, so often we're quick to talk about the one talking right. that we don't talk about the one listening Receiving. and always be critical of the person talking. And that's, and sometimes it's just, maybe you're not hearing it with God's ears. Well, there's that classic, like, I know what you said, like, what did you hear me say? (laughs) I know what I said in my heart, but what did you hear me say out of my mouth? Because that might not line up with what my heart was at all. And and for me, because, you know, with my parents, and I had, had, you know, great uh, great parents growing up, not perfect, um, but it's like my dad was very quiet. Mm -hmm. My mom um, was... uh, a little feisty, but at the same time, um, you know, very pleasing as well. Mm-hmm. And so growing up, um, there wasn't, um, unless I did something super bad, there was no, like, voices didn't go from here to here. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so so for, so me, like, with volume, I, you know, in in my core, I, I'd equate that as I'm in trouble, or I'm equate as in, what did, what did I do? What, you know, what I do. So, so for me that I've always been in, and it could be, it could be even a negative on my side is tone. Mm-hmm. It's like, you said this, but it was like, it was like, did you have to say it that way? I mean, did, you know, did it? And I grew up, we always talked to him. <laughs> oh, talk oh, yeah. Like when he came to visit, he's like, why are y'all mad at each other? I'm like, what? We're not I'm mad. Like, we're just like, having like, a talk. I was like, why are you, why are you loud? loud. Why, it's, it's like mad. it's like why why are they yelling? Why is everybody like, yelling? Oh, we're we're just talking about the weather. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking. And I so and, and so I get it. So I, I you know so tone and but I think that that also is understanding. It's it's how you communicate to each other. Uh, um, I believe Proverbs 25 verse 11 gives us a, a great thing with this that really says it this way: a word fitly spoken. That's good. Ooh, I like that. It doesn't yeah. say a word spoken. It says a word fitly, fitly spoken, spoken. Mm-hmm. is like apples of gold and settings of silver. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, it's like, so So my words, my words fitly spoken at the right time have the ability, apples of gold in settings of silver, and to break that scripture down pretty much means that when I speak right words to her, I frame her future. Wow, that's good. When wow. she speaks right things to me, she she speaks right things to, she re- speaks right things to my future and my destiny. So, so words are important. How words are said mm-hmm. and how they're received. Mm-hmm. So I have to receive it, not just as she's speaking a word fitly spoken, but am I receiving it? This is a word spoken at the right time. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we find one of the things that Ryan and I do is, um, if a word is spoken, perhaps not as fitly as it could have been. Then, then, <laughs> what? <laughs> then we then one of the things I say to myself is I I can believe the best that he meant the best he has the best intentions I know his heart I know where he's going so um, when something is not lining up like that the 
the love piece of speaking truth and love is receiving it with with a loving intention, right. whether whether it was sent that way or delivered that way or received that way. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good to be able to say, okay, I believe I believe you meant the best. Just like it, just like you do with a child, you know. Like I believe that you meant the best yeah. with with this, um, and that opens a door to be able to make to have a more conversation. Now, and yeah. now as we're talking and we're saying these words, we need to clarify that we're talking about speaking right words, mm-hmm. speaking words that that line up with God's words. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking about words like Ugly saying words. you're you're stupid, you're ignorant. Sure. You always burn the toast. You never do this. You're always asleep. You never pick up your socks. You never do that. You know, it's the nevers and those things. Now, there's a way to t- say that in a way is like, right. it's like, hey, could you could you help me with this? Mm-hmm. Don't criticize what they're not doing. Right. Tell them what they what you, you desire them to do. Mm-hmm. And and so so there, there's a there's also some things if you're demeaning sure. and there's language and you're <laughs> and you're escalating and. And you don't want to, don't be that guy, don't be that lady that your spouse doesn't know who they're coming home to. Right. It's mm. good. You know, good. let me say that. True. Don't be that. Don't be <laughs> that, that person. And don't be that, don't be <laughs> that guy. Yeah. It's like, you know, right. it's like no one wants to walk on eggshells. No one wants to, right. to, to feel yeah. like everything that's happening um, or everything they do is, is there's, there's a criticalness to it. Right. And, and. And under and that so that's that's what what we really need to focus on in the communication is yeah. is that that has to be paramount that we're coming from from God's heart Amen. and not not my flesh and what right. I think they should do and how I think they should react and right. you know so well and I think some of us are farther along in their spiritual walk than others mm-hmm. and when you combine that into a relationship we're like I might have past trauma you might have past experiences. Like we've said before, not all of us, you know, yeah. got to that altar wearing the white robe. <laughs> you know, yeah, some sure. of us had a little life before we got married. And sometimes you just inadvertently bring that baggage with you. Right. As much as you try not to, as much as you are like, I want to treat you like you deserve, but I have some PTSD yeah. from, you know, experiences. And so how do you, how do you help navigate those waters when you question. know you're trying? Like, I know I you, you're I see the best in you, but you need to see the best in me that I'm not whatever that thing is. Right. Right. That's good. Um, I, w- I would say, you know, there was things that um, Annette may have communicated early on, and all of a sudden it was like I'm going into that thought of, well, I've been here before, mm-hmm. and, I, and I don't like what I'm feeling right now. Mm-hmm. So, but then I'd have to take, everything's going to come back to the word and coming back to mm-hmm. taking it to the Lord. And, and the Lord is like, well, no, that's not her intention. That's not, that's not what's happening here. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it really, it really falls back under the line of communication mm-hmm. um, yeah. of what we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Still, it's like, wait a minute, that's not that person. This, this is, th- th- she's different. This is, this is the person that God's brought into my life in, in this, in this, this is God's restoration for me. Amen. Um, and so, and I think vice versa, because those are some conversations we had early on and not trying to judge them according to your past relationships. So right. that's no different than, um, you know, what Paul said. And um, because there is a high call, there is a mark that we're pressing towards. Mm-hmm. And he tells us, don't look, no, don't look behind you, but press on. Mm-hmm. Don't look on the things in the past, but look on in the things in the future, right? And press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, so it's like I've got to, I've got to make sure that I'm, I'm not, I'm living in the present, mm-hmm. and I'm living in the present of the restoration that God has given me, mm-hmm. not according to any past hurts, because right. the enemy will use those things. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's also giving the enemy no foothold or stronghold. Right. In that. So good, and it's so it's just an unhealthy way to hold a measuring stick up to your spouse. You know, it's just a, not a way to go about looking at them. Right. When you're always comparing them or always comparing critical them. of like right. the things that you're used to or that you expect. It's like it's a really. I had that a lot where I was just I, I would just have a critical nature, mm-hmm. and I was always like, man, like I don't <laughs> want to. Right. But it's like what I brought into the, the baggage yeah. that I had, where like right. things that had to be let go of. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a, something healthy that God did in me. And so I can't say it's like I did in me, um, but it, because we, we both experienced, you know, um, uh, challenges, both made mistakes, um, 
But in that, in Psalms 126, it said, when the Lord turned our captivity, mm. we were like them that dreamed. Mm. And um, if you, it's hard to explain it. It's only, it's only because of God. It's like, if I were to try to go back and remember mm-hmm. previous relationship, remember previous intimacy, remember those things, it's like, that didn't never happen to me. Good. And I know it, it can sound kind of odd, but it's like, I don't, there's it's not another person. There, there, it, was it was another like, time. It was it's almost, almost like, like a dream. It's like, did that ever, did that actually happen to me? Yeah. Did I actually walk through that? Right. Cause I don't think there's, there's nothing that I'm like, you talking about comparing a, you know, a, a measuring line to your past. There's, there's nothing that's, that's in me that looks back and, and, and even thinks about it. It's, it, it's, it's totally, totally God. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I can't explain it. It's not like That's I can, right. I can yeah. quantify well, it's, it. It's because you've received this as part of God's healing process. Yeah. And yeah. that was that was difficult. I mean, especially, well, I'm going to just speak for myself, but for me, um, you know, it was a man, you know, that hurt me. So it's like, how could another man bring healing mm. when it was a man that brought hurt? Mm-hmm. You know? And so it was... it. It was so supernatural, and I know, I mean, we can throw that word, and what does that mean? It means I had to get to a place where I totally trusted God, and I'm like, okay, God, if this is the person for me, then okay, I'm all in. I'm all in. Mm-hmm. If this is, and and then at that moment, it was almost, there was a grace to be what he needed me to be mm-hmm. in God, through God, and and vice versa. You know, he was, when God loves us, he loves us through people. Yeah. You know, when he heals us, it, it, it was this relationship that brought healing from a past right. hurt one. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. But it didn't make sense in the natural. It would be like, that's the thing I'm going to run from the fastest and the hardest. Right. Like, right. you know, why would I want to get back into that? Yeah. But it, right. it's because I'm tr- I have to trust God that this is the process that he has to heal me from that. What would you say to a spouse who maybe doesn't have that type of history, but has a, uh, their partner does, who now you're looking at somebody who's yeah. walking through that process of healing. Right. What would you say to, to that person? How do you support? Well, I, I don't know if this would have anything to do with this or even this lines up with that, but this is what came up my heart while she was speaking and, and trying to navigate this. But for me, as it also pertained to being healed was, knowing the difference between love and lust. Lust is trying to get something from someone. Lust is trying to take something from, from, from someone for my personal gain or my personal use. Mm-hmm. There was nothing in me that, that um, was trying to get something from Annette. Um, and I think that's where a lot of relationships have challenges. Both spouses are looking to try to get something from the other spouse to bring value or bring, um, uh, bring some sort of, uh, uh, ideal into, into their mm-hmm. lives when, when love, all it wants to do is give. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so, so those are the two things, how I know I'm in lust or I'm in love. And, and this, it's the fact of is, is I don't want anything from her. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to pour into her. I may not always, I may not, always do everything correct but ultimately the core of my heartbeat is to is to pour into her mm-hmm. not to take anything from her mm-hmm. because because I don't want to devalue what God values mm-hmm. and so when I'm if I'm operating in lust then I'm I am taking something so that means I'm devaluing right. from that person so if we were to go back and we talk about someone that may be single and someone that has had had a past right. it's just both people coming to a place where they're bringing value into the relationship, mm-hmm. not trying to take something from the relationship. And, and that comes down to, you know, you have to, you have to trust their heart. Mm-hmm. You have to trust their, their heart and, um, and just not allow the enemy to put up the insecurities that, you know, asking yourself, well, do I measure up? Do they measure up? Is this, that, and, mm-hmm. and or were, did they do this and did they do that? And, you know, there's a lot of things the enemy will use in that. But it comes back to is I'm more important. It's more important to me to add value to her instead of devaluing her. That's that great. might have been a, yeah. a 
Oh, I mean, that, that, no, that was powerful. You know, it's, yeah. it's and it's amazing to hear it that way because it's, it's such a true statement. When you when you have you're in a healthy relationship, your immediate is always outward. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you need? What can I help you with? Where are we going? And then if it's always the other way around, that's probably a, a red flag. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> sure. I would imagine. If you're good, I'm good. <clears throat> if you're not good, I'm not good. Right. Yeah. So I need to make sure that you're good. Right. So it, you need. Go ahead. It takes the it takes the who's the winner. Mm-hmm. Out of it, because yeah. we either both win or we both lose. Right. I was, you, and you've said that before in, in certain messages, and it always struck me as, as like not caring who wins an argument. Like you know, that's such a right. powerful stance of like mm-hmm. I don't care about winning the argument. I care about our relationship, and an argument is not nearly as important as a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, like being right here doesn't win anything if it causes division in us. Then what? No one. Won. We all we all are suffering greatly if that's the perspective or the end result. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that pride of like being, you know what, the, this is more important than whatever this is. That's it. And that's where that love mm-hmm. versus lust perspective is just huge. It's great. That's great. And you guys had some. So I say it's because you guys have a unique perspective that I don't have, but I'd be curious about. It. And that is, in our day and age, blended families mm-hmm. are just more and more common. You know, it's just a, a you know, it is what it is. You have these amazing people that come together that, not talking about baggage, but hey, we have children. Right. Right. We have right. kids. They kids could have kids. I mean, there's a lot coming together. It's not just the two become one. It's right. the four become eight. It's, yeah. you know, it right. looks like something different. And you guys have obviously have unique experience in that. And what was it like walking through that process? I think at the beginning it was, it was really hard because I had teenagers. Oh, um, year old. Yeah, and I had teenagers, so it was it was hard. But they they saw who he was and that he loved me, and that he was the same. Yeah, the same. He didn't treat me any differently than he treated me at home than he did out in public or at the church, mm-hmm. and that that spoke a lot to them. And he was sincere, and um. I, I really, I know that beyond any doubt that God brought them into not just my life, but their lives. And they know that. They know that now. Mm-hmm. And so now when we got married, um, he had a three-year-old. And so that was a little different because there was no understanding of how did this happen, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So that's been a growing thing. Um, where my kids were teenagers um they knew what had happened they knew mm-hmm. that we had there was a divorce and now we were, were together right. and they understood blended well somewhat of what a blended family sure. was um so we're still navigating and working through um the other the mm-hmm. our, our three-year-old who is now 18 but i remember whenever we got married or when we were even talking about getting married i mean i fell in love with this little boy and I saw it as God's grace on my life to do it again, mm-hmm. to have a second chance. Um, that's good. So that's still something, you know, because I'm not his mom, and just like mm-hmm. he's not their real father. Um, so we're still trying to learn what that looks like other than um, when you marry, you know, a woman who's got teenagers, of course, you can be their friend. And now, every now and then, Justin's had to put his foot down, in fact, more than once. but um, And they've respected him, but first he became their friend. Whereas in a real parent relationship, you don't want to be their friend. You have yeah. to be their parent. Right. But in this aspect, that's needed, what I'm talking about. They needed to know my heart. They needed to know his heart. And that, that was so. the first thing the Lord told me was, he goes, I said, well, what am I, you know, what am I supposed to do? Right. How do I navigate this? And he goes, just show them stability. Mm-hmm. Let them be stable. Right. Um, when you're talking about the blended family with or the, the youngest, the challenge in that that we've had to grow through is the fact that when we first got married and he was almost three, is that he lived with his mom, you know, uh, you know, four to five days a week. Mm-hmm. And then he'd be with us on the weekends. Yeah. So there was this thing where him and I were always doing things on the weekends. Um, and there was this, this 
idea family that was still being established for him. That yeah. His idea of what family really was supposed to look like was still being established. So. And so it's like, oh, I'm with, I'm with dad this weekend. And what does that look like? What does that look like? And, and then it got to a point for me and where, I, where some of the things I failed in was the fact that I didn't want his whole weekend to be with us about being grounded. And so, so I neglected some things there um, because it was like, not that I was trying to win him over, not that, that that wasn't the point, but I wanted to champion our time together oh, yeah, in that. Sure. And then, and then, and she, and then Annette would, well, why don't you go do this? Why don't you go do that? And, and all that. And it kind of, and, and so with that, and as they get older, it was just some things that, that I, I know that I probably didn't do correctly in that. And, and so that's, that's kind of, um, uh, that I'd still, uh, you know, a learning aspect of things. Yeah. But I believe um, we've blended well as far as yeah. what our families look like. Yes. I mean, we go on vacations together and oh, yeah. um, we spent holidays together. I know initially it, it was difficult to, you know, I, I love that that Justin still honored what we did at home. I could not just stop all of that. It was like, you know, this is what we usually did. We need to continue to do that until we build our own traditions, you know, mm -hmm. um, putting things up on their walls that we had at our old house and not getting rid of everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Still doing those things. And I love that it was okay to do that. Um, there was no, I mean, we never spoke ill of either, mm -hmm. of either spouse or whatever. We never talked about yeah. it. Yeah, you never talk um, about the other spouse. Whatever. it's just you know because because it's like you know Bren's mom will always be his mom mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. their dad will always be their dad yeah right. we have to and so yeah. right. so so they have to they'll have to create their own symbol of what they do but but the most part we're not going to talk negative against sure. them. sure sure and it's, it's not that because that's nothing but division yeah. and, and i believe that's that's key in in helping a blended family i work. do too because i've heard stories of people doing it the opposite way where it's oh this person's this this person you know and it's it creates a negative aspect when that child still really loves that other mm -hmm. parent it's not like there's a lack of love mm -hmm. um but i i've heard you guys say those things before about your ex-spouses and how and i think it's just super honoring yeah. to to say no we this is you know we're going to lift them up with our words mm -hmm. and stuff which um which I think is powerful. Yeah. So Justin's taught me a lot yeah. about loving. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. It's not always easy. Just watching him. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, it, but I think, though, it speaks volumes to where you're at and where we are at as, as people in the church who can see your, you know, Bryn's mom sitting in the stand yeah. or sitting in the pews and mm -hmm. a family all together. Yeah. And there's love yeah. there. It's yeah. not like it's begrudgingly sitting there. There no. isn't a, right. there's like, oh, that's, there's healing there. Yeah. Absolutely. There's redemption, right. there's restoration there. Yes. Well, then, if that can't be modeled better there, then where else can it be modeled? That, that if you can't, you know, that, so right. it speaks volumes to, uh, to yeah. you know, my wife's son was 19 when we got married. Yeah. Or 20, I take that back. We met it. I met him at 19, 20, but it's like the same thing. It's like, how do you mm -hmm. show that you truly love and care about yeah. those kids that aren't yours? And so right. You just got to do it. <laughs> right. Amen. So yeah, it's great that you guys good. example like e exemplify that and we get to see that. It's awesome. Yeah. And we've talked a lot about different things in this podcast and the ups and downs and stuff. But just to kind of wrap it up, when we talk about winning in marriage, you know, it's not like spouse against spouse. It's everybody wins together. Could you define what it means to have a winning marriage? Let's, let's end on a high note and not <laughs> all this heavy stuff. Um, <laughs> I would say winning in marriage, I think, would come down to the fact that you're, um, you're, you're constantly growing. Um, it's, you, you do things together. You, you know what each other's like. So you, and you, we, we love spending time together. We have a great time. There's things that we, we can be home, we be at home and do nothing and be totally fine. And happy. And we can, we can travel <laughs> to Italy and be busy and be, all the be, time. Be in, 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 in walking through Positano. It's my favorite place, our favorite mm -hmm. places on earth. And, and and be totally fine. It does it it doesn't matter as long as we're together. Mm -hmm. And so and so for me though, I think it's making a decision that that we're gonna con we're gonna continue to pursue God, mm -hmm. and 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 continue to grow together. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what it it ha you can't you can't. It's not one or the other. I think you have to do 
both. We, we both have to continue to pursue God, mm-hmm. and then we both have to continue to grow together and cultivate that time together. I agree. It's, it's time, a, it's time a, a winning marriage is, yeah, it is time to go on vacation. <laughs> but a, I, a winning marriage is is that. I mean, um, both of us seeking God, being humble and seeking God first more than anything, and then and then growing together because I, I believe that God will honor that when you put Him first. Um, I can't make Him happy. That's not what God's called me to do to make Him happy. God's the only one that can do that. And when I you know, and he can't make me happy. So I got to get him off the hook on a daily basis. You know, yeah, he's it's not, not his source. job. To, yeah, yeah he's, he's not my source of happiness. So a, a marriage can't win unless that is the foundation that both of you all are humbled and love God and, and trust him to be your everything first. And then mm-hmm. this will work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guaranteed. That's awesome. That's great. I mean, yeah. That's great. This is why we have these. This is why we do these. Yeah. This is, I'm, thank you. Thank you guys for being here. This has been so fun. It's been great. Um, We want to say thank you so much for everyone for for listening to this amazing episode. And we are so excited that we have these conversations with our leadership that we can get into like the practicals of how to live our day out and how to walk our marriages out in excellence. And I am so excited for that. We want to say thank you for this. We are welcoming next week. We have... Danny and Trina Hill Woo-hoo. will be here. So we're very excited because that is an amazing couple. And I am yeah. looking forward to that conversation. Right. That's going to be amazing. Um, and for those of you who haven't made Valentine plans yet, it's a little late. <laughs> you might, <laughs> might want to hurry up. But however, we will be having Wednesday service, Wednesday night service here. So you're always welcome to come and yeah. fill up on the Lord. That'd be an amazing date. So, you know, bring your spouse. And we would yeah. love to see you guys. And we hope to see you next Friday. Bye. Give them Jesus. Jesus.